Hello, everyone. Uh, in today's uh, short session, I wanted to uh, uncover how uh, VeloCloud SD1 handles multicast. Uh, but before I do so, using this uh, basic diagram here, uh, I wanted to remind me of a few important uh, technologies that multicast uses, and uh, namely uh, IGMP. So this is the way that the receivers on the local area network uh, will ask their uh, router for the channel that they want to join or uh, the group, right? So the receivers join a group that's uh, marked by a class B address. So we're talking about an IP address from the 224.0004 range. And PIM, because uh, if uh, the local router does not uh, have the stream or uh, if the source is not actually in the same LAN, uh, well, the edge here will need to uh, find out where that particular uh, stream lies. It's also good to note that uh, you can have one, you can have multiple sources, and each of those sources can actually generate multiple streams at the same time in the same way that uh, you can watch your TV and flick through the channels, right? The, your TV is one source, but uh, it supports multiple uh, groups or channels. The good news is that we support both of these protocols. Uh, for us, uh, it's a matter of supporting IGMP v2 uh, inside the LAN. Uh, so for example, in branch number one, we don't actually have any other routing device except the edge. Um, the edge will listen as long as you enable IGMP on the interfaces for um, any requests. And again, if uh, it's already serving that stream to somebody else in the local area, uh, it will just uh, get a copy across. And one of the reasons that we use multicast is uh, it's computationally less expensive than broadcasting the message everywhere or having separate unicast streams from each source to destination. We also support PIM because the edges of the branch need to follow the overlay, right? And make their way back to the source. In our case, we use what's called any source multicast as opposed to source specific multicast. Um, so the question would be, okay, I know what uh, group or what channel I want to join, right? I don't know where that is sourced. I don't have the actual IP address of the source on the right hand side. So any source multicast solves this issue by using what's called a rendezvous point, an RP, which for us, is any sort of third party router or layer three switch that can support this feature. The rendezvous point um, in our example uh, sits bang on in the middle of the communication between source and receivers. Uh, it's not a hard requirement to do so, but the idea of it is that it will get sources registering saying, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm a source, these are the groups I support. And then if any remote edges reach out and uh, ask for something, the rendezvous point will create a, a shortest path tree to it. So it will be the uh, distribution point of the multicast network. Now, this method of multicast um, is called sparse mode because it's some sort of a pool model, right? You need the receivers to ask for it. Uh, and this contrasts with dense mode in which we flood uh, the data to all the receivers and then prune them out. In that case, uh, we don't need any rendezvous point, but um, in our example, we need to, because again, we need the receivers with the help of the local edges and any sort of local infrastructure to figure out a way to get to the source. The reason I put branch two here is that when I mentioned branch one, you have the edge doing uh, all the routing but uh, we can also support a configuration in which uh, the edge is there to create overlay and be the proxy, uh, and the receivers will actually ask via IGMP another layer three switch that supports this functionality. So IGMP to the layer three switch, PIM onwards, PIM across the overlay, PIM to the RP, and uh, IGMP here. Now, there are a few caveats you have to remember. 
Currently, multicast is supported only on the global segment. Uh, so if you're using multiple segments, just be aware of that. Uh, we don't support uh, multicast across dynamic tunnels, uh, so they need to be the static ones. Um, to be honest, most uh, customers anyways would have the source in the data centers behind the hub as opposed to uh, any other branch, but just be aware in case they do. And this rendezvous point must be statically defined. Um, there are technologies out there which give you a dynamic way to find where the rendezvous point is, but in our solution, you have to manually define it and the groups it handles. Needless to say, uh, PIM, protocol independent multicast, runs on top of uh, your unicast uh, protocol of your choice. So just make sure that uh, the edges, the layer three switch, uh, have a unicast way to uh, reach the RP. So with this in mind, I'll show you the few configurations that you have to do inside the orchestrator itself. Uh, and that basically two steps that have to be taken either at the profile or at the edge level. First of all, turn on the multicast capability. You'll see here, we only have a static way to identify the RP. So this would be the private address. Remember we need a, uh, we need a root for it. And here you define the multicast group. So that is the class D address with a slash 32, right? So remember, do not forget this because it will not work. Obviously here you can add different RPs as well. As you're using the overlay to get from the branch back to the data center, you have to enable PIM and you have this optional field here. Um, this is not really a must, uh, but be aware that um, the edge itself will use uh, VLAN 1 uh, to provision a source IP address uh, as a management address for the communication. Now, once you told the edge, use the overlays, this is the RPs, these are the groups that the RPs are responsible for. The last thing you have to do is you have to go in the interface itself, uh, that is the LAN interface, and enable it. One thing to note here is that, as you can see, uh, we do not support uh, this on switch ports, so you need a rooted port, a VLAN, etc. So rooted, Multicast, uh, enable both uh, IGMP and PIM. Again, just to note that we only support sparse mode, not dense mode, and we currently support version two of IGMP. And make sure you enable both of them on the LAN interfaces that you expect other routers uh, to peer, uh, or uh, if you have receivers there. Click update, and you're all set.